Hello everyone and welcome to a video series I've been working on that I'm really excited to get started called Out on the Table. So this concept is pretty much a visual style podcast s type thing where I just want to overall ramble about a certain subject to my liking, you know, not have much structure, there is structure, and more of a way for me to just put something out there that I'm really passionate about, as well as, you know, I guess you could say I'm kind of lazy when it comes to editing. There'll be minimal editing when it comes to this video series, but pretty much I just want to talk about, you know, just, just the things I like to talk about sometimes. Maybe it's a subject that I haven't talked much about other people. Maybe it's a subject that I'm pretty knowledgeable on or something that really holds true to me. And what better way to start this video series than with an anime series that I hold very dear into my heart, which is Girls und Panzer. Now, a lot of people either don't know about this series, heard about it, see memes on it. I don't know. Sadly, my friend group really isn't that into it. Some people watched it. They said it's good. Uh, others had just like to make fun of it just to, you know, make fun of me. I get it. But for me right now, I'm just going to start at the very beginning of all of this because Girls and Panzer has a really big effect on the type of history I have as someone who creates uh, videos or creates anime videos now and then. We know how that goes. So uh, let's get started. So let's start at the very beginning. What I mean is when I first got into uh, watching anime, it was watching everything under the sun and I had something. I, uh, I didn't really have like, you know, good technology you know i wasn't making much money i worked at a retail job and oh, retail retail was rough man i made a whopping what 200 dollars a month and like the job was stressful hard dealing with karens all day but at the very beginning on one of my birthdays my brother got me a piece of tech that i used um to watch my anime on and it was a google <laughs> nexus 7 um <laughs> I don't, uh, what year was this? I don't know what year this was um, released, but it's, um, <clears throat> oh, geez, when did this come out? 2012, wow. This is a year after I after I graduated high school. So on here, I would watch, uh, I, I download like the Crunchyroll app, and this is back when Crunchyroll had a few ads. It was like four ads. Now it's like what, like six, like one minute? And 30 second ads like it's a lot of it's a lot of ads and it's it's rough um but i i use this uh quite religiously to watch all my anime on my bed uh i didn't have a good phone so you know i couldn't do that uh and you guys might be wondering why are we talking about technology when this is an episode about girls from panzer oh, we'll get there so in connection with this not only did i have um this uh tablet i also ended up saving up all my money to buy what I deemed was expensive at the time because you know you don't make much my first you know laptop or Chromebook and Chromebooks I'm not a fan of now because I have a real PC I got this I think a couple months at see look starting price is $99 when this came out it was like 200 maybe 250 and that was like you know so much saving at the time and Chromebooks aren't really real laptops or real computers. Uh, if you guys want to know, it's basically just a device that has Google apps on it and like the operating system isn't Windows. So you don't have access to all the good stuff that you have on a normal Windows computer, like all these apps down here that I have. You have to use whatever's in the Google market and be connected to the internet at that time. It was, it was awful, but it's all I had and it sucked. So, um, one sec here. So Crunchyroll still has Girl Zoom Panzer if I remember correctly. Ugh. Yes, we get it. Ugh. Um So back when I was uh watching uh on my Nexus tablet, I was scrolling through all the anime and then I stumbled upon Girl Zoom Panzer. The I think the year was like 20 was it 2013, I think. Uh, I'm not sure what year did this come out. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> More info and it gives no extra info great job great job uh all i can say is that well i can always go with my anime list so when i first saw uh girls and panzer the cover um i thought to myself that's a dumb idea girls driving tanks you know that that's automatically the first thing people think about like girls driving tanks that doesn't make sense that's stupid and that's the argument i get from a lot of my 
uh, a lot of my friends. And they were like, like, wow, why would you watch that? That's that, that, that's stupid, you know? This came out in 2012. There you go. So I watched it, I think, mid-2013, a little bit after. And <laughs> the reason why I thought that way, of why this wouldn't really work, um, was because I was kind of like piggybacking off of uh, just watching K-On!, after I finished K-On, I was like, oh, dude, that, that was great. You know, girls in the light music club, they barely play music, but still great. I thought Girls in Panzer was going to be run the same way. I thought it was going to be like, there's tanks, look closely, they're eating cake on this thing. It's like, they're probably not going to drive the tanks. They're just there for eye candy, you know? Like, and the anime girls were su or like, you know, are super big thing, even till this day. You know, you get any sort of, sort of hobby, put anime girls doing cute things, and then bam, you're good. All right, so... So yeah, that, that was my thought process, and um, I decided to watch it to give it a chance, because back then I was watching everything under the sun, and I was like, well, let's give it a chance. First time I watched it, I was pretty blown away. I was like, wow, that was a lot more entertaining than I thought. And then a few months later, I ended up watching it again, just because it was kind of stuck in my head. I was like, oh, that, 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 those girls driving those tanks and being blown away. I'm like, that's, that's pretty cool. Is there a second season? No. Well, there's extra episodes in an OVA, and I'll, I'll watch the OVA. And I watched it again, and I watched it again. And before I knew it, I just started thinking to myself, man, I think this is one of my personal favorite series. I think this is a, a series that I really hold dear to my heart. So combined with the power of my amazing Google Chromebook, this thing, I ended up making my first uh, piece of content. It was my first anime review, and I wanted to make anime reviews because I was a huge fan of uh, all those anime reviewers back then. Um, in fact, like you know, I always, I followed uh, Glass Reflection um, Jakarta quite a bit. If you guys want a legit review on Curl Zoom Panzer, okay, nice. everything he says in here is, is something uh, I pretty much agree with. Uh, we'll just skip to the end here. He does he his analysis on it is is really good. Um, and I like the way he he rated everything on here, about uh, how he feels about it. So he really enjoyed it, and this is these are pretty much what he thought about it. I agree with every single one of these. Um, but you should check out this review if you want someone a little more smarter than me, because <laughs> uh, I'm not good at reviewing things to be honest. I uh, just I like it. I don't like it. Whatever. But. This, uh, watching the series and having my terrible Chromebook, which I will stop looking at now, and my tablet, I was able to create my first Girlzoon Panzer review. So, we will, <laughs> this is like one that's like archived for a while. I had it up for a bit, um, on, on like my personal, personal channel. I took it down, I think, like last year. And did it do well? Doesn't matter. Hey guys, a ton of big great voice great logo too <laughs> i'm working on it okay it was early days this is 2013 and uh pretty much all i can say is i'm still proud of this to this day because this wasn't the tipping point for yay i want to make videos and stuff like that with all my friends i want them to be anime related videos so it, this is the start and it makes me proud to this day but the things that are talked about in here when i was rewatching it uh a few days ago uh kind of kind of big oof and yikes but this is me back then out of high school and i'm a lot more mature now obviously so uh yeah uh. i'm here bringing you a review <laughs> of girls in Panzer. with the use of schoolgirls almost always being a constant source of profit for many production companies <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> okay so that joke there i i guess back then i had like something against like shaft i don't know i think it's because during that time everyone was like kept on talking about like uh, everyone kept on talking about Monogatari or something like that. Whoops, uh, what was I going to show you? But uh, before I go further into this, I made this video on a crappy software only on Google Chrome. That was on Google Chromebook Market, whatever it's called, called Wii Video. As someone who has never used a, a um, editing software back then when I was first getting into it, I knew right off the bat this was a horrible <laughs> editing software this is bad I, whatever they're saying in this front page and i'm sorry if like they improved over time yeah 30 million yeah that's garbage because everyone likes to use vegas uh hit film and whatever program but <laughs> garbage this was garbage exporting the entire video like was the worst process ever you had like pay something and like have like an account it was oh uh, yeah, I don't know how I did this. So the Chromebook com 
fine with this and make my first video like that was my first taste of editing and it took i put all my energy into it and i was frustrated but uh just throwing it out there um yeah it's not surprising to see different genres being mixed and together test. to form these fantasy worlds that is the schoolgirl genre whether it's action, horror, sci-fi, comedy, or even zombies, the use of schoolgirls <laughs> is a gimmick that seems like it isn't going away anytime soon. I mean, how else are we going to get our short skirt and long stockings? <laughs> Freaking yikes. So, so <laughs> look how bad, like, <laughs> this JPEG image is. And then I have, like, the cleanest picture right next to it. I think I chose this because, like, it's like so lewd obviously like there wasn't as much good lewd fan art as there is like back 2013 than than there is now like there's a higher demand for it but the i just typed in like girls and shorts anime girls short skirts on google and i just pulled whatever was relevant to what i was talking about when i put the video in other than actually going to a japanese high school although that is looked down upon for someone my age but with all these big companies <laughs> trying to get in on the cute school goal craze there was one series that stuck out for me just by saying its name alone girls un panzer now at first i was a bit skeptical about watching the series because well girls driving tanks didn't appeal to me my first thought was that the schoolgirl genre was really getting desperate by these <laughs> schoolgirls. I did, I did so there. much flipping. But I will say so that much after flipping. The, series, the thing was, when I first like put this on YouTube, the amount of copyright strikes I got, because that's how I was learning about copyright and all that stuff, like music, footage, and everything else. I was doing everything I can to keep that video up. I was flipping. Later on, you'll see I put like these weird watermarks on top. That was like a template from Wii Video. It, it was. Mm. I really enjoyed it, a little more than I thought. Girls Room Panzer takes place at Orai Girls Academy, but instead of this school having activities like the Light Music Club, a Dying Drama Club, a Going Home Club... <laughs> Look how... <laughs> I couldn't find the front... A good front cover of the Going Home Club anime, which I never watched. It's just... <laughs> Look Look at that, that's... <laughs> Going home club or a data processing club. Yushiki. The main club in every school focuses on a more violent sport that is sencha do or tankery. In this world, tank so um, I'm, I don't think I'd go over it in this video. Or um, but uh, a little thing that kind of uh, irritates me when it comes to the whole pronunciation of sencha do, which is what's called in in Girls and Panzer, and the subtitled uh versions of like well, whoever subs it uh, they put tankery sometimes um i'm not sure if it's in the official subs for for sentai but they either say tankery or tank wando like taekwondo i hate it when people say tank wando i know i don't play the sport i know that like i don't live in that world but i hate it when everyone's like yeah like tank wando and i'm like oh yes yeah, small thing there in this world tankery which is the art of so here, here's tanks so here's the watermark is a national sport that all female schools could baby maybe, maybe youtube might not take it down now young women take part in tankery they will become a better wife a better mother and a better student they will become healthier more modest and best of all men from all over the world will fall in love with them now right away you guys might be thinking shouldn't the gender roles be switched around in no a lot of gender talk coming up, so brace yourselves, boys. No part of this series does it show males operating tanks at all. They even make fun of the fact that guys and tanks don't mix. But this shows what type of setting we're in. In this universe, all men become bitches and the women wear the pants in the relationship. Yikes. Although the exact time is <laughs> never stated, it's almost obvious that Girls Room Panzer takes place way into the future because... Well, look where their school is located. Holy shit! Whoa, wait, wait. This is a school? That's a school too? What kind of students are you trying to raise here? Child soldiers? Then we have our main protagonist. <laughs> I still Miho love that Ishizumi, joke. A second year transfer student. From I'm proud of that no matter what. Notorious for their long history of tankery. <laughs> Miho's reason for transferring to a different school is because she wanted to get away from tankery for good after experiencing a traumatic incident that caused her entire team to lose the final. Oh game. my god. <laughs> I was I was too lazy to put dark text so you could read that better for like a joke that doesn't really hit hard. It says the word you have shamed the niche you like come on, like I, clearly like there's some details here that got past me when I first made this. Because winning is all we care about. Now, you would think that Miho would try to accept her mistake and continue to get better at tankery, but Flipped. she thought it was easier to just run away and join a school that didn't have tankery at all. 
Sadly, yeah, there's all this effort text, becomes useless yeah. because she later gets muscled into reviving the Tankery Club by the student council. Some things never change. Then we have Saori Takabe, a friend of Miho who is surprisingly the most accurate interpretation of every high school girl in the history of mankind. That is, she's only good at texting, instant messaging, <laughs> and shopping. Ouch, With all these useful skills in mind, she later becomes the radio operator of the entire team. Ha <laughs> ha, not surprising at all. <laughs> but, but wait, there's more. She's good at other things, like uh, complaining, decorating, and uh... Oh wait, she can cook? Well, that's no fun. Everyone could cook. <laughs> then we have Hana Ishizu, another friend of Miho's who was raised in a proper home with a strict family that specializes in... The amazing skill of flower arrangements. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I guess back then, like, I thought to myself, like, what's the point of, like, arranging flowers? You know, I'm not, I'm not into it now, still, obviously, and I'm not a gardener of any sort or a flower arranger, but I think till this day, I'm just like, oh, that's not really much of a skill. You should put flowers together. I'm sure there's a lot more that goes into it, but me back then it was just like, yeah, yeah, that's useless. But then she says fuck it and gets bored and joins Tankery so she can shoot the cannon on the tank. Oh, it gets loud here. Sorry. <laughs> Great cuts. Gross. The driver of the team, Mako Reze, a genius student that suffers from having <laughs> low blood pressure and struggles to get her act together when it comes to attending class. And finally, we have Yuka yes, Akiyama, best girl the of the team, and is known oh. as the tank genius of the entire anime. Now, it's obvious why she joined Tankery in the first place, but she also greatly admires Miho. She admires her so much to the point where anyone could look at her and whisper to Miho, "Yo, Miho, she wants the D," or, I guess in this case, she wants the V. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. I think I think I left that joke in. I think I left that joke in there mainly because, sorry, a lot of people were, I guess, when, when even out of high school for me, that was the thing to say, around like that was the thing to say, when like, uh, you're trying to mack on girls and stuff like that. Like, yo, she wants the D. Like, like today it's like, oh, she thirsty or whatever. I don't know what the kids say, but back then. We always said she wants the D, and I feel like you don't hear that much nowadays, unless you want to make like a sunlight vitamin D joke. But like back then, I, I'm probably gonna say this quite often for this video. Back then, it was funny. Now it's not funny, but I stand by this video regardless. Interesting. I only remember the other supporting casts based off of what group they're affiliated with, such as the student council, the volleyball team, <laughs> the fucking freshmen and the extras that were thrown in literally at the last second. Even though true. they were in the opening sequence the entire series. Very true. Kudos for adding brown people though. I was starting to feel like there was no character <laughs> for me to relate to. The only character development I observed was Miho. At first she hated Tankery, but through various battles, her skills showed proof that she was meant to continue this brutal sport. She should also do track and field because she can apparently launch up 17 feet Look at those quick maths. Without a running start. Bet she could dunk too. Although the characters <laughs> Shout weren't that apparent, I was actually watching. Uh, the series is obviously the tanks. When I was editing this, I think during that time I was I was like first watching Crocodile Basket. So I was really into that. And the semi-realistic tank battles. I mean, every tank in the series is incredibly accurate. The animation of the tank battles made each scene more intense. Even the history surrounding each tank and their pros and cons are accurately portrayed as well. Such as the size and strength of the fucking Panzer A mouse. As a side note, uh, there is a lot of profanity I use in this video. Um, personally for me, now whenever I make videos or do any content, I try to keep my profanity at a minimum because I think that it's not necessarily the best way in order to describe uh, your emotions and stuff like that. Yeah, it's fun to say stuff like that, but um, I've kind of grown more since then and I try to keep all that to a minimum. You know, keep it professional, keep it classy. Freaking huge. <laughs> yeah, saying get wrecked was the thing back then too, if you guys remember. Man, that thing's like the tank of tanks. And the hard to use Porsche Tiger. Dibs, <laughs> I'm not driving that one. 
Everything hmm. about each tank was thoroughly explained. Oh, also, in terms of how I recorded the audio um, for for this video, shout out to Yo Gimme Rice because uh, he had a ghetto recording studio in his own room at that time. Um, before, of course, now he's like making music and he's uh, he's doing really well. But back then, of course, we used what we got, and I didn't have a recording software or recording equipment, so he had uh, most of that uh, with his like old uh, Apple laptop. So I was able to get the audio from him and put it into my Chromebook. So. Uh, I'm very appreciative um, of that, and I was really happy that he was able to help me. Even though he didn't watch the show, I was just like, hey, I need to record an anime review. Like, can you help me out? So shout out to him. Thanks, you'll give me rice. And all the way down to even their specs and how they were used in war, which I thought was a huge strong point for the anime because it was almost like having a history lesson with the use of schoolgirls as our teachers. Thanks, Yukari. <laughs> the only thing that I thought was downright crazy was the fact that they were able to successfully drift a tank twice. Logic? Fuck you, I'm a Panzer IV. Agreed. Agreed. Overall, Girls Whom Panzer is just one big enjoyable history lesson about tanks. The teams that were featured use actual tactics based off of famous battles and the music is pretty solid too. Every team had their own marching theme that was based off of their own country's origin. The tank battles are very well done and exciting. Although, at first I thought Girls and Panzer was one huge plan to collaborate with World of Tanks, it's still a fun series to watch if you want to see epic battles with cunning strategies and learn a thing or two about tanks. Even though there are cute schoolgirls operating these manly war machines, if you turn off your brain, it's a fun watch. Also, for a series involving schoolgirls, the fan service is kept to a minimum. <laughs> for the most part. That's hardly fan the service, part of the come series on. series is very straightforward. Win every battle or get your shit rocked. With all these factors in mind, I am willing to <laughs> give Girls Boom Panzer a anime review grade of a solid B-. With my favorite character being Yukari Akiyama, and my favorite scenes in the series will be involving anything that has a drifting tank in it. So, um, this here was uh, pretty much the format I wanted to do for at least every review. Because uh, I noticed like during that time when anime reviews were still being... Anime reviews are still like, you know, relevant now, but not as relevant as like anything else nowadays i don't think many people watch anime reviews now uh people just like to watch like impressions and like podcast stuff and stay current um but for me uh when i was doing this uh i wanted to do a basically a letter grade system i felt like it was a little more accurate for me than doing either numbers or decimal numbers or stars so and of course like highlighting like what from the series i liked or if i hated the series i'd be at least favorite this character at least favorite thing about the scenes and stuff like that you know ten, i was trying to make like a format that was a little more um me so so yeah thanks for watching this review guys make sure you yeah oh uh, pretty much that's the end of the video so yeah that was my first review um i'm i'm, I'm very proud of that proud of that review to this day uh and of course that's <laughs> i don't know if i should repost that video again i don't even know if i'll go back to doing anime reviews uh because i've only done i think three there is i do have a no game no life review somewhere um that's where like i show my face and stuff but uh yeah yeah so where do i go from here so girls and panzer i love this series obviously look at my wallpaper and there's a lot to it that i really enjoy from it and um connected to this series i'd probably say uh let's see what am i looking at here so let's go to the subject of like the voice actors first of all um if you guys are one of the things in girls Dream panzer in the film so let me search that up for you so uh what the content they have now the content they have now uh after that you know review and stuff like that they do have a, a film called girls Dream panzer der der film and uh, yeah that was 2015 it looks like and other pieces of content they have is OVAs, and the OVAs are, uh, let's see, they're, they're, they're all right, it's just like more, um, a lot of things they had was like character introductions, because there was a lot of characters uh, in Girls Room Panzer, there were so many actually, and the thing with the OVAs is that they're all right, um, oh, Girls Room OVAs. But it's basically just side stuff that they do. And one episode is about like Yukari, like hangs out with Erwin and stuff like that. And it's uh, it, it's all right. But but one of the things that like they do is like 
I got like 10.5 like introductions. It's literally just recap plus uh, all the side characters, and they say each side character what they like, their favorite tank, favorite flower, favorite food, and like where you see them. And I'm like, man, like that's that's a lot of interesting like random content, and I wasn't really a fan of that. Um, but then the point that we're at now in the Girls and Panzer franchise is now we're at the point where we're at like uh, Das Finale, which is basically the finale, the final parts of the series, and each episode is airing <laughs> once a year. Um, but each one's a theatrical uh, release. Um, like this one here, yeah, see, 2017, they aired this one, and then down here, June 2019. And so as of right now this year, uh, they haven't said anything. And of course, we all know what's going on right now. So it's it's still, the, the franchise is still alive, but it's not as rampant as you expect like any other popular anime series. It's still kind of low-key, but very dedicated fan base, which is what um, I personally am proud of. Uh, one of the things that um, is also interesting about this series is that on one of the episodes right here, episode 7, it says up next Anzio. So the Anzio battle was quickly glossed over. Um, let's see if I can find like a picture battle. Girls and Panzer. Uh... Probably like not, not the whole battle, but there's like a shot where they don't really, they did, so in the actual series, they did not do, yeah, here it is, perfect. So in the actual uh, series, when they're like, hey, up next is this Italian team, Anzio, all they did at the very last part of the episode was like, all right, we're ready to fight, last minute, you see them come out of their tanks all defeated, and that's the battle. And it's like, what? What they did after the series ended is that they released an OVA, which highlights how they won this battle. I thought that was very um, interesting how they did that. I'm not sure what their reasoning was, but if throughout the series they were doing those OVAs where they just introduced like the characters, they could have just took this episode and this episode out and replaced it with the Anzio uh, battle. But the Anzio battle is like 45 minutes and, uh, against like you know the regular Girls and Panzer anime episodes that were like what. You know, 25 minutes. So, I guess that was an extra tree, but that was that was an interesting decision. And another thing I want to mention about the Anzio battle is that in the manga, in the manga, it's a lot uh, different. Actually, um, I don't have pictures or examples of it, but in the Anzio battle, where um, what they did was they just fought them head on with what they had. Uh, compared to what happened in the manga, it was a lot different because Yukari got uh and was not working with uh the original team uh if that makes any sense because the thing i like about the ghost and panzer manga it is the same story but it's all from the perspective of uh yukari and obvi obviously i'm not obviously i'm not against that because uh throughout the whole thing it's um <clears throat> they basically treat uh yukari as the main character the entire time so during the Anzio battle, Yukari uh, ends up being a captain in her own tank. She ends up breaking away from Miho and the rest of the crew, and they end up operating a different tank. I think it's the, um, <clears throat> I think it's the tank that the Mallard team was doing, or, or what the. Uh, but no, but uh, yeah, I'm all over the place right now. But pretty much, yeah, sadly, Yukari gets her own tank and she ends up leading her own squad against the Anzio uh, team. And I just thought it was cool seeing Yukari in a leadership position because in that chapter, you know, she was very reflexive. She got to work with Erwin, the blonde haired girl that wears that German hat and like another character. And they're like, Yukari, you're so you're so mean or you're not mean, but you're so strict kind of deal. What is this? Hold on. Detour random yo i want that oh what are all mm -hmm. i might get this guy so cute never heard that website though uh yeah so that's where we're at right now in terms of the anime itself so uh in terms of the movie though which i thought was really really interesting is that in the movie they had um the a finnish team which uh which i thought was interesting mainly because i've never seen uh 
those characters before. A lot of people are asking me during the Girls Room Panzer uh, film, they're like, hey, have you, like, are those characters, like, brand new? Like, where'd they come from? And they were brand new. And it was the, uh, let's put Finnish, the Finnish team. So these characters here, these were completely new in the Girls Room Panzer film. Uh, and they were called, continu yeah, Continuation High School, which, uh, they're Finnish influence. And then they're the ones that had that one, uh, polka song whatever it's called here hold on you guys can see my youtube history the finish song uh oh, can't even spell right they're the ones that had this song so why do i mention this well I, I i do like these characters a lot i like her hat she's adorable and they have one of the best scenes in the film but i thought that when they were going to bring in another group of people in the in the movie i thought they were going to pull someone in called uh magonaut high school so who's magonaut high school magonaut high school has no anime uh no anime uh influence at all or, or showing in the anime so um magonaut is from what I understand, a canon battle that happens in the manga that is before one of their exhibition matches against St. Gloriana. St. Gloriana is like their first like quote-unquote official match. And this is a... So Orai, or like the girls from there, they verse um, a... They're basically a French-based team. And it, it, was a, it was a good uh, story, you know, and she's like sick. I don't know, I think she throws up there. Ugh. But uh, she, like, this character um, basically is, like, a decent leader, and she was trying to break away from their traditional way of fighting, which was having one heavy tank in the middle, and that's the Magnot logo, one heavy tank in the middle, middle and then light tanks surrounding it kind of deal, kind of like a turtle-based strategy. And she was trying to uh, break past that kind of deal. It, it was a, yeah, fierce fight. It's the Magnot battle. Yeah, so the, this never, it says spin-off, but I'm pretty sure... Uh, it's a story that takes place before their first loss against St. Gloriana, uh, spoiler alert. So the fact that in the film, they pulled in the Finnish team, and this is completely, like, out of, out of nowhere, like, these are just new ca uh, characters that are canon now, instead of pulling in, uh, Magna High School, it was, I thought that was an interesting decision, but I guess that maybe would cause too much confusion, but it would add continuity if they chose Magna over them to go on, but hey, Finland has better music, I guess. So, uh, in terms of the manga, the prequel to the uh, Girls of Panzer manga, or the story overall, is Girls of Panzer Little Army. So, this is uh, a manga about the uh, old squad that Miho, that Miho used to roll with uh, when she was first training to, to become a, a, a tankery specialist. So, in the I um, I always wanted this to be animated as well as have them have a reference back to it, mainly because. Uh, pretty sure like the this girl here is like the one who's like the cold-hearted one and the really like z a zealous one when it comes to tankery and blames miho for in her inexperience and i think she has an older sister that but that faces miho's older sister maho and um these two other characters are basically her old squad mates really great heartwarming story and uh i hope one day they uh, they animate it see look how look how cold she is to her you know come on come on Okay, that's not related. So, uh, Little Army is, is one thing I look forward to in terms of, like, hopefully there's a future for it. But uh, if you guys haven't read Little Army, and I, I have all the manga, so it's it's a good, it's a really good read. Uh, I highly suggest it. Um, where was I? See how there's no structure to this video? I'm just going for it. Magnot Battle, Little Army. Uh, let's see. Oh, and here's more shots of just... Of the Magnot, uh, the Magnot character of how she would look, and like I think that would have been cool if we, if we had that going. Oh, 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 yes, a spin-off, spin-off manga. So, uh, if you want more Girls Room Panzer, but something that's like a little different taste, there's the Girls Room Panzer uh, manga called a uh, Ribbon Warrior. Ribbon Warrior is a spin-off. And it's, uh, you know how they have like tank battles, right? This one is a something called tank, it's a tankery. It's called t Tank Lathon. And uh, pretty much it's like anything that's under a 10 ton weight restriction. So only light tanks and tankettes are about, and it's basically fast paced battling. Think of it as like 
there's official racing like tankery is like official racing like nascar right it's sanctioned uh you're under uh referee rules and it's like you know you have the record books and only official schools are going to be able to compete in it uh, based off regulations. And then you got Tanklathon, which is basically underground tank battling uh, with like no holds barred races and like, or like battling. And it's like one of those things where like you go to the backwoods of like some park and like you got people with like no safety barriers just standing around watching these tanks fight. That's all it is. I haven't finished this. Uh,. I think it looks like there's only 13 volumes it looks like oh that looks oh i like how that looks um this character apparently is like super hardcore uh, i forget her name yeah shizuka she's super hardcore she's got yandere heart eyes which i'm all about and uh throughout the series um the characters that are the the characters from the girls Zoom panzer anime and manga make um Make their appearances in here at some point usually it's their subordinates that take their that take her on one-on-one -on -one or do a team battle versus her kind of deal and she's like the mastermind slash i'm gonna go against the grain and be the one that'll destroy all of you and she's a very hot-headed and very uh strong opponent uh, as you can notice just like look at her she's just like oh god i love how you how you fight i don't know <laughs> she looks like she has that kind of look and i, I kind of like it uh, I love her character design too, so in terms of just more Girls Moon Panzer content, um, this is what I either want to see animated or maybe seen continued. I'll pick this back up. <clears throat> oh, see, it still says it's ongoing, and damn, see, 2014 and what, it's 2020 now, so maybe it isn't uh, ongoing, it's probably on hiatus, so yeah, that, that right there is uh, really, uh, a really cool thing to get into. Oh, uh, let's backtrack a bit. So, going back to Girls in Panzer reviews. Coming tanker. Um, oh, here it is. You guys should check out Potential History. Potential History is a, uh, is a channel that specializes just in, like, you know, history of, like, World War One, World War Two, um, everything. And, uh, he does really good work. Um, this is awkward. I'm suggesting I'm not subscribed to him. Uh, yeah. So, the reason why, uh, I mentioned him is because he is someone who is not an anime watcher but reviews girls in panzer and seeing an outside review of a non-anime watcher watching girls in panzer was something that i feel like not really people many people get the opportunity to witness because like there's a lot of anime reviewers out there but a lot of those anime reviewers are actual anime fans so to have like a non-anime fan reviews something is always kind of like a breath of fresh air to me i feel like more channels should do it kind of deal not do it just for the likes but in the views but just someone that's like hey i don't watch anime but here's an anime series i started watching and here's what i think of it i think that's a really cool concept but that's i feel like that's something that's hi not my name's johnny and i'm not a big fan of anime miss me with that gay shit not for any <laughs> particular reason i just could never get into it and to be honest i never really tried but about a year ago, I found something that was so... Shout out to him. I'm probably, we're not going to watch the whole thing. But going back to, like, in terms... Of, he watched this whole thing dubbed, too. Which, by the way, the Girls Room Panzer dub is booty. Not the good kind of booty that I like. Uh, but there's one part where he... But in, throughout this video, he does... He watched the movie, the whole series. I think he's going to do DOS Finale. No, I think he does. Yeah. Yeah, he does do DOS Finale. So that's... Oh, that makes me happy. More content. Uh, he just all he does is that uh, since he loves learning about uh, war and history he does a side-by-side -side comparison of like the music the tanks and like his criticism on how realistic girls and panzer is and he says uh, you guys should just check it out but probably the only complaint that i saw that i remember from this video is that he says a lot of tanks travel too fast but he'll always talk about like oh this song was made by these people uh this tank moved like this and that seemed right this seemed right how did this happen and like he shows like footage of like actual in the order of song. battle the girl announcing mentions them using one firefly now this was a real tank that was based off the sherman series but it was a conversion made using the british 17 pounder gun the u.s army never used it and it doesn't make any sense having it on the american team the last reference in yeah see so he's he's very very smart very intuitive uh i highly uh recommend uh checking this video out if you're a fan of girls and panzer and you want to see some uh more in-depth analysis on it he uh, and <laughs> he ends up talking about yeah. oh yes okay see i'm here i was here because i was trying to review it so 
in Ghost and Panzer, in terms of going back to the sub and dub, <laughs> so the dub is so bad. And there's a part in the series where they talk about the music, and uh, not talk about it, they sing the music, and obviously they sing like some Japanese songs, which is called Marching in the Snow. And it's, uh, he explains it here, and here's one of the reasons why I don't like the dub. Miho sends cosplay girl Nyakuri to do recon, and we are treated to this. <laughs> Marching in the snow and treading the ice. We can't tell what was a river or what was a road. The horse collapses, but we can't leave it behind. Everywhere we go, we're in the midst of the enemy. Now what they are trying to sing sounds like this. <laughs> Now, I guess this doesn't translate very well, but I would think you could at least, like, have the two of their voices sync up or something. I don't see why they took take one and were just like, yeah, that'll do. Anyway. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> He's so right. It sounds so bad. Wait, like, I did a wash through in dub uh, for the Girls and Panzer dub, and, like, bro. What was a river or what was a road? Bro. <laughs> Let's go back to the VAs. So let's meet the VAs. Uh, there's a really low chance for me to meet the VAs at a convention. I would love to one day. Not sure where this is held at, but I always thought this is really uh, nice. They sing one of the songs. It's sorry. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the thing is, like, they're not—they're obviously not like love life status. And I want to do a love life video later on. But I thought this was super adorable that they're singing, and uh, I want to point out how accurate Yukari's voice actor looks. Yeah, that's that's Hana and Siju. She sounds so nice. I want that jacket. Yeah, she plays the part. Look at her. I want to meet her one day. One day. <laughs> I love her. Uh, I, just, I just thought that was a cool performance, and they do the ending theme as well, which is, you know, I, I feel like more voice actors should do stuff like this, you know, not just like Idol and Love Live related stuff, but I just thought this was a cool treat to see the voice actors performing songs on stage and all that. Um, more voice actor stuff. So, going back to the, f going back to the movie, um, there was a character. Uh, I forgot her name. I think her name is Clara. Clara, in the Girls in Panzer movie, who is actual in uh, the voice actor of Clara in uh, Girls in Panzer. Probably didn't get that wrong. Is it's her? And um, this this lady here was from Russia, and she came all the way from Russia to be a Japanese voice actor here, and she had to obviously learn Japanese in order to become a, a voice actor. Her. And gosh, she looks so cool looking. And the thing that was really interesting about this is that obviously she was able to uh, use her own language in the movie as well, and able to speak it so fluently, but also translate over to Japanese. It's her dream, but getting it wasn't easy. She started the uphill climb 11 years ago Damn. when she moved to Japan. <laughs> Wow. Genia grew up watching anime in the third largest Russian city of Novosibirsk. I just wanted to become Seiyu. It was my dream. I've graduated university and I thought what I want to do for my life. Just working like everyone else or doing something nobody else did before. So I chose. That is ambition. That is really cool. So, um, so yeah. I thought that was a really cool piece of tidbit information about uh, one of the voice actors. Let's oh, let's jump back to the manga. So there's another spin-off manga, which is called uh, "Who Can Read This?" Moto love, love, sucks and this whatever. I think it just means more love. So this one, if you just love the characters, if you just love um, seeing all the girls interact with each other, and it even says here, it's like, hey, so here's. Your attention, panty shots are strictly forbidden. I'm not a fan of that rule, but that's okay because Yukari said so. And it says here there will be less tanks, and it's just them 
uh, pretty much having a slice of life story uh, together, just for coma or more. And oh, it's it's great. I, I actually when I was like pulling up all these panels, uh, I ended up like reading like half the series again. Like here's one. Yeah, see, like they're washing the tank, and she's like, "Oh, Blitzkrieg attack! Ooh, yeah, full frontal assault!" And then sprays her back because of the water sprayed. Miho got sick, and pretty much everyone else's shtick and like uh, stuff like that is in this series or in this uh, manga. So um, uh, let, me, let me see. I think I have some of my favorite chapters pulled up here. Yeah, like this chapter here. Um pretty much they're saying that this is canon but this is uh the chapter where yukari asks miho out on a date and you know she's all excited and little did you know uh the reason why she has such fluffy hair is mainly because uh yukari works yukari's family is a uh lives how am i how am i not saying this right yukari's parents are owners of a barber shop so that's why she has such good hair and so she asked him for help her dad's obviously not again not with having any a relationship and you see you car like this all suave looking um apparently that's what they wear for for marriage i love those outfits she wears a cat uniform <laughs> then she miho appears on her date but she brought the crew and she's like damn it damn it i couldn't be alone with her um, I think one of my favorite panels are in here. Uh, something about yeah, right here, this one, the All Star Cast one, and Nishizumi don't know, Nishizumi like it's their own sound effect. She's like, oh no, it's all of them, the young and lovely Nishizumi don't know, and then the mom and sister are like, yeah, you made me, and she's like, huh. <laughs> I really love this series. Whoa, she looks thick. Damn. And yeah, it's just like the everyday life of all the, uh, of all the girls from Panzer cast, which, uh, I'm a huge fan of. Uh, let's see. We're back to the anime. Did you know that they have another side thing, which, um, is called Yukari's Tank Corner. And it's when Yukari talks about in detail, just like potential history, uh, about each tank. So, Akiyama Yukari no Senshako! みなさんこんにちは。この世界に存在する全ての戦車が大好きな秋山ゆかりです。今回は戦車戦の迫力がさらに高まった。足並みと戦車道のルールについてお伝えしましょう。戦車道の試合規則では試合。So pretty much just more Yukari content, more tank content, and they just recycle the same stuff and all that i think there's a promotion for the actual blu-ray box but she does have her own segment where she goes over every single tank in the series talks about what war it came from and it's all from yukari's perspective why do i mention this you know because there is um there is actually if you guys remember the movie fury that there is a fury collab with girls in panzer where yukari does that exact same thing during the movie uh fury with brad pitt and uh i've yet to buy this and watch it or see if it's like legit or not but pretty much yeah it's yukari doing a commentary over this movie and talking about the tanks and the warfare and all the other stuff which i don't know i guess wherever tanks exist in whatever media girls who panzer wants in on it because the creator apparently if you haven't noticed is a huge tank otaku so uh yeah, if tanks are they're calling, you know, it's it's gonna it's gonna be there. Uh since we're on the topic of like crossovers and collabs, there's obviously a World of Tanks collab. Uh I played World of Tanks a bit um on Xbox and obviously the the collab the Grocery Panzer collab wasn't there, but on PlayStation 4, like uh, later on when you guys start seeing me play like uh my PS4 and stuff, this is actually my background. Uh, the Girls in Panzer World Tanks uh, collab. And uh, yeah, I didn't play this much. The game is kind of too slow and you gotta pay to win and stuff like that. It's It was cool for like a month. But obviously the, the collabs uh, are real. To the point where... Um, let's see. To the point where they did a giveaway. They did a giveaway 
of to promote the movie way back and they did a body pillow of an actual freaking tank and i wanted this but i was too late it'll see december 26 2015 and i was like if you purchase tickets to see the girls who panzer film uh you get to enter a lottery and it's 70 only 70 were given out so i don't know if i could find this to buy that'd be great because i think that's the funniest place because you know anime fans oh you need to you got a body pillow you're so weird but if i had a body pillow with a tank on it it's like oh what does that make me it makes me badass that's what it does oh <laughs> uh, what else what else what else what else uh oh um this was a video that was linked to me and i don't pay much too much attention to this youtube anymore you YouTube, you youtuber anymore and it's pewdiepie pewdiepie ended up playing the girls who panzer game i have to play more games it's a dupe i'll play the best goddamn game there is in the entire universe <laughs> i'm talking of course about i'm talking of course about i'm talking of course about <laughs> Girls in the Panza Durima Tank in the Machi! <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Don't skip oh, it. Wow. Boo, why? <laughs> Look at that, everyone. Fuck. Damn it! Can I play? Here we go. <laughs> it's time to kill all the. What the hell is it? War has changed. There you go. Like, shout out to PewDiePie, he doesn't need it. But, uh, yeah, he played Girls Who Pants, and everyone was, like, messaging me, like, yo, dude, Girls Who Pants is on the map. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. Like, just to see, like, this game, and I have yet to play this game. And, uh, I'm not in a rush to play it, honestly, because my game backlog is obviously huge. But I thought this was really cool to see, like, you know, my favorite anime series being, like, you know, on a large platform and, like, well-known to, you know. So someone is, like, I more or less promoting it. I hope a lot of people either picked up the game or watched the series, because you really don't see girls in pants are being talked about a lot in the anime community. Obviously, because it's such a tight knit community, but the fans are you know like like we're we're there, we're existent. There are dozens of us. And in fact, this channel that I found here, which I thought was a uh, really cool. So, so, so in Japan, obviously, you know. Right here is Orai. I went there and you guys are here. I went here and you guys will hear more about that in a bit, but I think these guys are coming together for like a convention slash car meetup slash fan meetup for Girls and Panzer. I think they're like celebrating something. I don't know. But I want to be here when this happens. You know, one day. So shout out to this channel. I will subscribe to them right now. <laughs> Ah, scary. Oh. <laughs> so cool. Ah, that's so weird looking. So I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's like military fans and just like girls and panzer fans all coming together because when i went to this town it was empty empty yeah see look, look the releases of the tank see oh i would have bought all those man or they're probably just promoting it like they do at conventions i don't know oh so lewd oh so lewd so lewd ah i would buy all that oh i would buy that too dude if I was here, I would have emptied that place out. <laughs> oh my god. They signed it, wow. Yeah, this challenge just basically goes there. I think they go I think they do this every year. See this is twenty eighteen and it's just everyone flexing their cars like car meet up. I would make my car like that if I had the money and another car. Oh wow. Yeah, uh, he does a he does a lot of this actually, like on this channel. He goes there, like, yeah. See, twenty nineteen, they're there again. So I think they do it every November, October, November. Yeah, I've been there, man. Like, I, I think it's like an official thing, an official meetup. And so, like, these are all these are my people. These are all fans. I walked those streets. I remember all that. 
Nice! <laughs> so yeah, the fan base exists. So um yes, uh one thing one thing to mention is that I have been there before. So congrats, I will now show you guys my pilgrimage to Alright, you get to see my beautiful face and my amazing haircut. So, um, to give a little bit of background, so in 2018, I went to Japan uh, on a trip and I was really grateful to go with my friends because they invited me along. It was almost like spur of the moment. But uh, on the day I went to this uh, pilgrimage to Ori, I think I was, I think I was in Ueno? I don't know the exact town I'll, we were staying at, but my uh my friends were like hey today's just another chill day you know we weren't really strict on an itinerary we weren't strict on anything we we're just go out to eat walk around chill you know maybe might discover something you know but on this day they're like hey another free day we're gonna go to ichiran which is a ramen place that's really good then afterwards we're gonna go to um we're gonna go to see the gundam do you want to join us you know or are you joining us let's go but me, I was like, you know what, since it's our day where we, since it's like our last day here before we have to head back to Tokyo Station and, you know, uh, take a train to our flight, I'm actually going to go on my pilgrimage. So, like, I get up at, like, 8 in the morning, take two trains, and traveling here, like, Ori is in, like, the middle of nowhere, technically. Uh, yeah, it was in Ibaraki. Yeah, it's like in like the far freaking corner of like, of, of Japan. Like it is, well, not news, sorry. Uh, well, show me a map. See, automatically you just see Girls in Panzer uh, stuff, you know. Ah, I'm not gonna be able to find a map on it. Uh, depicting this very badly. Oh, uh, this help? Oh, yeah, that doesn't help you guys. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, take two trains and I get here like at 10, 30, maybe 11. And so I chose to come to this town in place of seeing the Gundam. And at the time, it was a unicorn Gundam that was on display. Was it worth it? Honestly, for me, yeah, because I love this series so much. I'll see the Gundam some other time, hopefully, when all these things blow over. But here is me in Ori. So here, um, right here is the Ori station that is in the anime, and I think I have a picture, yes! So this is the same station that they go by in the anime. Yep, right there. So yeah, there's my face. And comparison, right there. Really happy I got to go there. Don't you just love my smile? And that's like that first year. Like, I was just walking around the town alone, and just taking a picture of every single Girls and Panzer related thing. Look, you can see a guy. <laughs> So yeah, I guess you see a guy there, he's like, oh look, a fan, a freaking American fan, darn it, they're all here. And there was just so much merch around each store, and obviously the town's painted in it. But the town itself was dead. There was no one there, I was obviously there at a very, like, awkward time. Like, I guess there was no celebrations going on, but I guess they still embrace it, because it kind of bumped up their economy. I mean, I gave them my money, I like they have glasses. Yay, dark skin character. So here's the uh, mall. Now, I walked through this mall. And, uh, let's see, where is it? I walked through the mall, and this is the same mall, like, right here. I, like, walked this area right here. So it was really cool seeing that. So they get, they get actual structures from the Ori town and put it in the anime, which is a common thing to do with uh, a lot of anime. So I got to go to the official gallery where they had a bunch of stuff. So, you know, you see the card or cutouts. The voice actors signed them. And all their cutouts are everywhere. I just thought this one was, was, was cute as hell. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. So I bought so much merch. And the guy at the counter was, you know, really nice. He obviously knew that I was a huge fan. Took my picture. And I think these are like all the either voice actors, staff, whatever of the board. Back at the corner there is uh, the gallery and pretty much like their history and all the accomplishments they did and how they were able to get a lot of people to come to the town. Maybe the town was dying. I don't know the full story of it, and I should research on it later on. Uh, oh, the tower. Yes, that's the same tower in the anime that they drive by. See? And obviously the ship's not in port, or the school ship, of course. 
but it was right there uh you are able to go inside it and near nearby in the back area here was like a, a spa i would have went there but i was running out of time like i was in this town for i think about five hours just walking around aimlessly um and i wanted to get back in time just to meet up with my friends and get to the hotel in time and just have like uh my own dinner too like do the whole like i'll uh, just walk around japan get something to eat so this was a this was a really fun thing happy thing i did like i was super super happy about it a lot of the stores were closed i think though like I, there was just so little business it's like i, I didn't want to try my luck and try knocking or getting in there like if the doors were closed i didn't go in you know and this was a this was a weekend that's uh th if you guys are wondering what this character is this is like one of the judges that you rarely see in the series neko girl uh another tank <laughs> i posted this picture on like the girls Zoom panzer subreddit and like i called this like the kv1 and they're like oh, that's not the kv1 that's just something okay i'm not super smart when it comes to tanks i just like the series itself okay like i know like the the anime is for like tank nerds but me like i like world war ii stuff and i do like learning about tanks but not as much as other people um one last picture with the waifu yeah um oh you can buy yukari's official backpack i saw the price of this it was super expensive but uh, i i have enough backpacks with me for conventions and yeah this was at the station this is all inside like the station store i only think this is stuff you like you, i think you can you can buy this i think this is like here to like advertising hey here's an official pocket thing or an official scarf and all that stuff and like buttons and more merch and i'm like man they really they really paint the town in this stuff so i was super happy to be oh here we go here's all the stuff that i buy like this is equal to like like two three hundred dollars i think you have like that um this is like a girls in panzer or a gi i think the term is for it's those things that those guys wear at the stalls when they're cooking fish you know i have the flag which i have in my room right now this scarf was uh, a gift to someone that the our anime podcast that i'm a part of um to my buddy cav shout out to him i sent this to him um because he, he he lives uh in russia and hopefully this keeps him warm um i had a tie so this is a girl's from panzer tie and this tie uh, if you flip it under it's a picture of that girl from the continuation high school i i don't wear this tie that often mainly because it's a little thin for me and i'm a pretty big guy so that's just more novelty the sticker here of yukari i have still haven't used it probably never going to use it the pins i used to have on my convention lanyard and it fell off once almost lost it so i don't display it on my lanyard anymore just because i'm afraid to lose it and this uh that there the keychain holder is what i use for my id for when i go to work so i still use that to this day so that's how much i love the series i went as far as going on a journey there um is there anything else to discuss about girls and panzer you know what I think that's all um, I could squeeze out right now. So, yeah, uh, Girls and Panzer, in all honesty, check it out. If I were to place it in my top 10, to be very honest, it'd be sitting at like 8, number 8 or 7. But that, that's being like, you know, look at all the anime I've watched uh, over the years. And it's just a series that I hold deep in my heart because it's a series that proved me wrong when i said this is a weird concept but then when i watched it i was super blown away and i was like whoa i should invest more time to this because i obviously judged a book by its cover and assumed that it wasn't gonna be good because of the concept and there's a lot of anime series that you know had a weird concept but you know proved me wrong and so that's why i try to be more open-minded what i watch and i'll watch anything so if you guys have suggestions let me know but hopefully you guys enjoyed me all uh, rambling on for what seems to be about an hour and 10 minutes so far uh i really don't have anything else to discuss this is just everything i know so far about girls and panzer the amount of money i spent on the series a lot i have all the figures oh yeah let's talk about actually yeah, let's talk about merch um the girls and panzer um Nendoroids. I have almost all of them. Not almost all of them. I can't spell Nendoroids right. What the heck? So, uh, yeah. So the, the this package here, 
Oh my god, so it's two cards. Okay, so I, I did good. So, funny story about these ones. So, um, I have all these. Uh, they're not displayed right now because we had to do a bunch of moving in my room and have to redo a bunch of stuff. But I have all these ones. Um, and the thing is, is that it's like going for 200 now. That's atrocious. I saw these at a convention and I was with my buddy Becker. Shout out to Becker from our anime podcast. And uh, he came up to visit me, so it was really fun hanging out with him. But we were walking around at my local convention and <laughs> I, I told him explicitly, please uh, make sure I don't buy anything. He's like, oh, hey, sure thing, man. Next thing I know, I walk by a booth and I see these figures. And these figures are in those little boxes. Um. It's in like those little like blind boxes, right? So you have to use like your pull game, and I have horrible pull game. You know, uh, it's <laughs> horrible pull pull out game. Yeah, it like looked like this, right? <laughs> and so, um, first thing I thought was like, man, I want all of them because there are already like gaps inside the box. So obviously, like some of the girls I want, most likely Yukari is the one I want, was probably taken. So, but then I noticed that there's another fresh box under it that was sealed up. So I talked with the guy saying, hey, I want all of them. Can I get a discount if I uh, buy all of them at once? Because I think each box was like, uh, like 12 bucks or something like that. So 12 bucks a figure. So I was like, hey, make you cut me a deal because there's 10 total. And I look on my phone while he's like talking to me. Obviously, I'm comparing prices. On Amazon, when I first looked it up, it was about like... 110 bucks on amazon and i was able to talk talk the guy into him giving it to me for like 90 bucks so copped that super happy about it and then right after i bought that and again shout out to becker for not helping me show restraint i ended up buying the tank this one the good smile tank so i have this as well and what you do is that you get the tank and you put them uh you put the girls in the tank. I'm just showing a picture. It kind of looks like this, you know. So I basically put the girls in the tank, and then like they they fit exactly in there. So yeah, see the doors are open. So um, and it looks like this isn't being sold anymore. So that was I bought that for like I think hundred ten, hundred. Is it going for one twenty? Looks like about like hundred and ten bucks, I think. Uh, also at um. At my local convention, I think a year later, or I think like a year before, I think it was 2014. There is a Kupoche, I think that's how you say it, um, figure. It's this one, the Yukari one. Yeah, see? At my local convention, SakuraCon. Um, this was in 2016. Yeah, so 2016. Uh, this was like the official release of the Girls in Panzer <laughs> Yukari Kapoche, and I was like, oh my god, it's a match made in heaven. <laughs> I'm at my local convention, they're releasing my favorite character, my favorite anime of this new figure, and I don't have this on display, but I was super happy I bought it. I should have bought two. I think there's more though. Yeah, they have a Miho one, and it looks like they have uh, this one as well. Um, oh, that's new. Oh, I'm going down the rabbit hole of merch now. <laughs> The amount of money I spent on this series, no, you have no idea. Almost as much as Love Live, which might be the next video of this series. So, I'm gonna end it here, uh, end it here, guys. Um, thank you guys for listening to me ramble about this stuff. Um, this concludes my Girls Room Panther out on the table. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Um, more of these on the way. And if there's a topic you want me to cover, or if I'm feeling for it, just let me know. Uh, let me know what you think of this format. Uh, obviously, I'll take any sort of uh, criticisms and other things. But uh, yeah, uh, I want to sincerely thank you guys. And I'm going to end it on, obviously, the big thing is watch Girls in Panzer. Thank you, guys. Be safe out there. Stay gold.